This part here though, this starts to get trickier. You find a defect. So we don't even know, we're not in the factory, right? We just pull the light bulb out, it's not working, which actually happened to me four weeks ago. I got moved into a new house, buy a new light bulbs, you're like, great, okay? I'm going back to Bunnings, but I want to know answers, right? What's the probability that the manager's on duty when this particular light bulb was made? So let's start by writing, how do I say this? There's a condition in here, right? What's the condition? Remember, I gave you some clues as to like the words you can look for, right? What are you thinking? The condition is if you find a defect. This is the thing that's known. It is a bit weird because you're like, oh, I'm going backwards through the situation now, right? But actually this kind of thing happens all the time. This is more normal than the other situation because we don't know what's happening in the factory. So I'm gonna write, uh, oops, sorry. The condition is that there's a defect, right? The favorable event, the thing I'm actually interested in is, was the manager there, right? So that's actually the thing, that's the A. That's the thing that comes first. And that's why it's just a reversal of what we looked at before. Okay, now even though in this case it was kind of trivial, like I already knew what the answer was before we started. In this case, none of these numbers is just flat out the answer because we haven't been given that information, okay? But we can work out the top and the bottom. Take 30 seconds. Turn to the person next to you and have a think about like, have an argument, a discussion about what would you put on the top and what you put on the bottom. Yeah. Yep. So what I want you to think about is how would you take what you've just said and, and put it into working so that I know just from what you've written, not from telling me. You know how you literally just sent me. I just use those numbers, right? But I don't get to find that out when I'm marking your paper. I just get to read this, and I've got to be able to see in here what you just told me. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Did I hear someone say, this is weird? Okay, all right. Let's have a think about it. I'm gonna suggest that we start on the numerator, because this part's easier. It's easier because we've already done it. Remember, um, and this is why I, I insisted that we do this before, right? Even though you're like, this is silly, I already know the answer. The probability of there being a defect and there being the manager on duty, uh, these are those two numbers together, right? And one of the nice things about multiplication is that it doesn't matter which one comes first, they're both happening together. So you see how this order and this order are different, but when it comes to multiplication, don't care, right? This is still 3% times 65%. I've just put it around the other way. I know I'm still gonna get the same answer. This is the probability of both things happening at the same time. Is that okay? Okay. But when it comes to the denominator, this is trickier, right? Our sample space is reduced. It's not all four of these options, but it's not just one of them. There's more than one way for there to be a defect, right? Can you point me to where on the tree diagram? There's one, two, three, four. The third one, ah, that's got a defect. And the first one, that's got a defect as well, right? Now each of these things are both in my reduced sample space, my S2, as it were. And this is where I got to that question before, right? We know that when we go along the branches, we multiply. But when we're going like these separate things, what do we do? We don't multiply, we we add them, because these are two separate events, and including this and this gets more and more likely the more events we include. That's why it's addition. Addition makes these kinds of fractions bigger. You following? Okay, so on the denominator here, I'm gonna make it a bit longer, because we're gonna have to have both of those things over there. I'm gonna put a plus sign in. What are we gonna have? We already know one of the, one of the situations, right? It's the one we just wrote down. 3%, 65%. This is the defect when the manager's there, right? But there can also be a defect when the manager's not there. That's, that's this one down here, right? So that's 5% times 35% when they're not there. 
Are you following? Can you see how I built that together? You can see why this, you were all like, <laughs> this is such a simple looking formula, right? Like, why do I need to write this? Because in situations that are real, you actually have to think quite carefully about all the different ways something could be possible. This is calculator work now. Can someone go ahead and give me a number? Yeah, go ahead. 52.7%. 52 point, do we get some agreement? Yeah. yeah, okay. Let's just go ahead and say that that's to one decimal place. Now, this is a super important part of the question, uh, the, the part that I'm about to pose to you. So once you've written that down, put your pens down, and let's, let's think about this together. You must ask this part of the question whenever you finish a probability question. That number there, 52.7%. Does that make sense? Is it plausible? This is what I like to call the sense check, right? You can't always do a sense check. Not all questions are so easy to do. If you're doing like a, I don't know, proving the two triangles are congruent, you just get to the end. Like, is it sensible? Well, they told me they were congruent, so I hope so, right? This though, I want you to think about, use your intuition a little bit. Is this number bigger or smaller? Or like, how can you think about why this would be a sensible answer? Because we've all gotten it. So either it's good, or we're all the same kind of wrong. Okay, yeah, suggestion. Because the manager is more like often at duty, so there's a high chance like the defect would occur when the manager is there. Okay, let, I'm just going to repeat word for word if I can what you just said, right? The manager is more often on duty, like almost twice as much as they are off duty, right? So for sure we know this should be reasonably high, should be reasonably high. Um, we wouldn't expect it to be lower than 35% because usually they are there. Usually they are there, right? But it's, um, it's less than the 65%. Like if we got the light bulb and we didn't open it, we didn't know whether it was defective or not, and I said, hey, what's the probability that the manager was on duty when this mystery, mystery light bulb that you have no conditions on, when this was built, was the manager on duty or not? You would not do any of this calculation. You would just say, well, they're there 65% of the time, so I just answer this. Why is the probability reduced when I pull it out and I say, oh, it's a dud. Have a think. I pull it out, I know it's not working, and that leads me to say, the probability's not so high now, it's lower. Hmm. Take a second, turn to the person next to you. Have a think about this. I don't wanna, I know a few of you have the answer, but I am not satisfied with how many of you do. Why is it, I'll restate the question, right? Why is it that once you pull the light bulb out, like before you looked at it, before you knew it was defective, this is what you thought. But then you pull it out and you're like, oh, it's not working. There must be a lower chance. Take a second to turn to the person next to you. Aha. Okay. So it's to do with these numbers, right? It's to do with these numbers. Um, we don't know whether the manager's a man or woman, by the way. But anyway, when they are on duty, we know the chance of them producing a defect or their workers producing a defect, it drops. Does that make sense? So it's like, oh, okay, before you look at it, while it's still in the box, you're like 65%. And you take it out and you're like, it's not working, but it's usually, it's, there's, a, there's a lower chance of it being not working when they're there, right? So you're like, now that I know it's not working, I figure, oh, this, this is probably one of those ones that happened when they weren't there. This is more likely than this. And you can go ahead and you can crunch the numbers again, by the way. If you reverse this probability, this will go up, right? Because there's more likelihood. It's like <laughs> apparently when the manager's there, everyone freaks out and they stuff up their, their light bulbs, right? So it's about this relative difference. And you can go ahead and do the calculations yourself to convince yourself.